Welcome to New Zealand's biggest that Laura and I decided to tackle a couple of years ago where we had to do 365 activities in 365 days all around New Zealand. Well, today we are going to pack a punch. We're going to check out the Moaki Boulders, then we're going to check out the Victorian Fate in Oamaru, then we're going to check the Little Blue Penguin um, Colony in Oamaru. So for this video, we'll do the first two, and on the next video, part two, we'll check out the Blue Penguin Colony. See you then. This morning we are leaving Dunedin really early because we have a long drive ahead of us. We are going to the little township of Oamaru, but beforehand we are stopping at the world famous Moyaki Boulders. Alright, so we just arrived at the Moyaki Boulders beach. At high tide. And it's probably high tide. So we're probably not gonna see no shit. But that's the only time we actually could come here since we're going all the way to Oamaru today. So we'll do our best to show you something anyway. So it really looks like we have come here at high tide. All we can see is the very tops of the Moaraki boulders, which are famous for being very perfectly spherical shaped boulders on the beach. We've seen many amazing photos of these boulders and we really expected to be able to see something as magical today, but here they are, the top of the Moaraki boulders getting splashed by the waves. Nevertheless, unfazed, we still make our way as close as we can get to the boulders. Uh, yeah, so luckily these stairs were here because we would have been having wet feet. So this is another one of those places in New Zealand where you need to come at low tide, just like Tunnel Beach, Hot Water Beach and much more. Ah, uh, feeling a little stupid for thinking we could come here just whenever we wanted. Now the interesting story is how the boulders have been formed. The wave over the years have eroded the mudstone cliffs, exposing the more resistant boulders, and the boulders themselves have been formed by concretion, which is a process of mineral cement compacted together. And the results are those perfectly spherical stones in which tourists get to take amazing pictures. How did you enjoy the Moriaki boulders? Well, it wasn't quite the experience I was imagining for the Moraki boulders, but uh, yeah, it was a lot more wet than I realized. Thankfully, these are not the only perfectly spherical boulders that we can see in New Zealand. We will get another opportunity when we reach the Hokianga area of the North Island. But for now, we have one last high tide conundrum to tackle before we leave. Ah, a bit of a splash. <laughs> It's with wet feet that we now make our way back to the camper van to hit the road once again, this time all the way to Oamaru, which is the Victorian capital of New Zealand, as well as being the steampunk capital. And we see that straight away when we arrive just in time for the Victorian Fete weekend. He's just having some technical difficulties. The Victorian Fetch is a two-day event happening every single year in Oamaru and that's a bit of a mishmash of steampunk, bagpipe players and a ton of really old stuff put together by a bunch of really passionate people. It's really cool to see all those steam engines and all those other creations all around the town but the main event is going to be happening a little bit later on this afternoon where there is a massive parade all around the Oamaru Township. And the reason why this fete is held in Oamaru is because most of the buildings in the town are actually Victorian. As per the bagpipe, I don't really know why they're here. Is it comfortable? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. While everybody is getting ready for the Victorian parade this afternoon, we are strolling around the town and seeing a little bit of pieces of these parades coming up. It's pretty cool to see everybody kind of making their way around town to their meeting point before the parade begins and it gives me exactly enough time to go shopping. Well, probably interesting, probably reasonably priced. I'm interested. I kind of want it for two bucks. <laughs> I just bought it. Did you actually buy it? Yeah. <laughs> Why? What are we doing with this? One of you has a white lens and a non-white lens. Does it actually work? Yeah. 
So in short, fuck GoPro, this is what I'm going to be using from now on. Look, you get a quick release handle. Here you are. Wide angle and narrow angle. Stabilization of the elbow. <laughs> um, focus, auto focus. Oh, what the hell? Oh, interesting. Um, and you can go on auto or manual. Wow. I mean, you can't really do any better than that. I can zoom. With his ridiculous camera, Robin and I are now watching the Victorian Parade, which is a pretty surreal feeling because surrounded by all these Victorian buildings and then watching people on penny farthings and dressed up like they're from the Victorian era actually feels like we have walked into a time warp here. We are seeing all these really old steam engines as well as other vintage vehicles. And the really cool thing about this parade as well is that a lot of the locals have got dressed up in vintage Victorian clothing under the banners of whichever occupation they are in. For instance, there's a bunch of people from the hospital dressed up in their medical gears from the Victorian age. It's really entertaining to see and we're super glad that we've arrived in Omaru at this time of the year. The Victorian Fet happened happens around mid-November every year, so definitely go and check it out if you get the chance. And while watching the rest of the parade going, I'm gonna go through a few facts about the Victorian era that have been told to me by some participants of the parade. First up, black was the fashion statement. Everybody was dressed in black because the air was so polluted in London that, well, that was the only thing that wasn't stained. And about makeup, women need not used to wear makeup in the Victorian era that was only reserved for prostitutes that was very, very tacky back in the days. Also, back in the days, people didn't really bathe. After the parade, Laura and I are keeping the sugar level high with an ice cream because we are not done today. We are heading to the lovely Blue Penguin Colony, which is an awesome place to check out the Blue Penguin coming back from the sea. We did check that out when back in Dunedin, but in Oamaru, the colony is bigger and even more active. So don't miss that out in the part two of this day 179. Overhead. Wide angle and non wide angle. Yeah. Works better than a freaking GoPro. Yeah. I don't know what you're complaining about, Mara. It works better than a GoPro. Look how crooked is your GoPro. I know. Yeah, I, I, I did that. <laughs> I did this then. Excuse me. Alright guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. That's definitely a side of New Zealand that you may not have known about. Uh, a lot of people do not know about all those fets and festivals that New Zealand has to offer. Let's check out a couple of comments that you guys had uh, the first time we published it. And the only comment we had was from Why in the World that says that um, he had no idea about this festival despite the fact that he's a local, he lives in Dunedin. So that's to tell you guys that sometimes it is worth Checking out, checking out nzpocketguy.com to find more things to do in New Zealand. nzpocketguy.com. Sorry, I did bite my tongue as I was saying it. All right, hit like and subscribe if you want to say thank you for all the hard work. And I'll see you in part two of this video where we're going to be checking out the little blue penguin colony. See you then.